What's up, fat guy, Chris? Sterilizing all my uh, AV equipment. Uh -huh. We should all spray ISO all over. What's up, trash panda? I'm, uh, I finally organized the library. I'm really excited. By organized, I mean I put it on a shelf. I'm on a shelf. So now, I've got work to do. <laughs> so, if, by my count, just right here, we got like 71 species. 71. That's a 7 and a 1. That's not counting my entire personal library of stuff, which is probably easily another 40. Now I got a thumb screw every one of them because I haven't been taken care of. So yeah, no, I'm streaming live on YouTube now. I'm streaming live on Instagram. We're streaming everywhere. It's on my YouTube. I hope y'all are having a good Thursday. Just for fun, just to give you a bit of a highlight of what we're going to be doing. I've got a whole bunch of morel transfers to do. I've got to make some production plates. Then. I've got some stuff like this. That's a pheasant back, pheasant back dry sample. And I'm going to show you how to resurrect these. Why do I keep showing the camera? Like I keep looking at myself and the camera down here, except the camera's here. And I'll be showing you random bits of mycelium because now all mycelium is what. And what's cool is that if you're interested, all of this is also going to be in the class tomorrow. Um, it starts at 5 p.m. Mountain Time. Uh, we'll be covering cultures and transfers, uh, aseptic technique, fungal biology, isolations, breeding programs, pairs. Uh, I'll be answering all the questions you have, all that unique with Jeff. Is that all said and done? Let's get started. So first, you're going to see a couple of things. I'm going to point this out. This is a little mason jar. In here, we have freshly boiled water. It's lukewarm water now, um, but I boiled it. Why did I boil it? Because I wanted sterile, right? So I boiled it, and I poured it in front of here. I didn't have any distilled water. Otherwise, I'd have used that. Ooh, somebody was mentioning, uh, Brave Rivers mentioning, uh, some uh, lion's mane isolations. That's cool. So, but if you're wondering what these are, these are jars, obviously. This one's filled with sterile water. This one is going to be filled with the hero of the day, hydrogen peroxide, 3% dilution. <laughs> Get that at a drugstore, Target, CVS, etc. Walmart. Why am I going to be using this? We're going to be dealing with old, old contaminated samples. If these dried ones definitely have contamination on the outside. So, I'm actually going to use a hydrogen peroxide bag. What do I mean by that? Well, some of these wild samples are dry. They've been uh, harvested. They've been around the block a few times. You know, carried around in people's pockets and stuff. I guarantee your pocket lid probably has enough uh, crud in it to uh, make a mother weep. So uh, 
Well, I don't want to have that on my auger plates. So, be right back. I'm going to walk around here and grab some auger plates, and I'm going to grab another rack. Greetings from Argentina. Yeah, welcome. The great thing about mushrooms is they're global. While I was on my sojourn over there, I found somebody cellular technology phone. So, I'm in front of a globe. What am I doing? I'm wiping down dish racks. These are uh, these are just regular old uh, dish or organization racks for a kitchen or shelf that you find at Target, Walmart, CVS, like God knows what else, right? The reason why I'm doing this is I don't want anything that I want to stay sterile to be sitting on the work surface because airflow goes this way. If I can have things up off the ground, there are more inside of that sterile workflow space. So, uh, yeah. Now I'm going to sterilize this. Actually, I'm going to move down a little bit so it's easier for everyone to see. All right, there. Everyone can see that. Make it a little bit easier for you to. Okay. Auger plates. I forgot my auger plates. Oops. Auger plates. If you're interested in some fresh pores, these are always available up on our website. And as I like to say, I like the thick pores, and I cannot lie. These are our shop plates, so we don't worry about sold and stuff like that. We don't really care. Because if we, if the mushrooms don't care, we don't care. Now, so remember, the key to aseptic technique is when you're in the sterile zone, like Kenny Loggins, right? Uh, when you're in the sterile zone, you want to touch as few things as possible. So I don't want to be pulling wraps, parafilm, everything else off of this stuff when uh, when I'm actually trying to work, right? So, and if you've got questions about anything, like any of our products, what we're doing here, we are uh, happy to answer. Just so you know, uh, we've got a class online via Zoom tomorrow, um, so you can dial in from anywhere. It'll be at, it starts at 5 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, Mountain Time. Um, and it's all about um, cultures, so mushroom cultures, spore prints, fungal biology, mating, isolation uh and if i can get enough uh attendees to the class tomorrow i'm going to uh uh raise the time up to uh two and a half hours come and hit me with your best shot more plates i'll be right back we must construct additional pylons More plates, more birds. So yeah, wild, wild clone resurrection. I've got a bunch of morel production plates. Pretty sure I got some. Yeah. So uh, yeast and bacterial stuff kind of happen sometimes, and. The cool thing about bacterial infections, in fact, I was looking at some of the work I did the other day, and I noticed that there were some bacteria on it because the samples were like literally underwater. How do you make clear water? Um, okay, so the clear, the best way to get nice clear water is to pour it when it's still hot. 
right, and shake it really, really, really well. So what we do is we'll throw in like 20, uh, 20 grams of agar agar. We'll throw in 28 uh, tw- or 20 grams of um, uh, light malt extract, and we shake it. We shake it hard. Um, and I mean, shake, shake, shake. The key to have uh, having really nice, clear uh, auger is first shaking it and blending it really, really, really well. Sterilizing it, obviously. Um, and uh, pouring it while it's still hot. Right? Because you need it, you need basically auger auger doesn't, auger auger's natural state is not in fact liquid, it's a gel. All right. I think that's enough to get started. Let's go get the work list, all right? Let's see here. Where we got questions? Yeah, Lion's Mane is great. Just getting some comments from YouTube saying that they're working with Lion's Mane. Oh yeah, no problem. And so for those of you who don't know, we actually, I've been uploading like the past year, lots of videos to YouTube here and there. Um, unfortunately, as I think we all know, mushroom farming is relatively intense, time consuming work. So I don't necessarily get the time or the ability to uh, not work, which of course is why I'm streaming while I'm working on production. So. Oh yeah, yeah. We have lots of fresh malt uh, extract here in Colorado. So we're in base in Colorado. I get lots of millet, lots, lots of grains, lots of things like that. Firing up the induction sterilizer. Press button. Sterilizer. Why on earth can't I donate to the stream hot creamy part? Um, well, hot creamy part. Funny you should mention about donating. Um, as of this morning, we have submitted our Kickstarter project over the vehicle. We are now looking, we have signed the lease, and we are going to be moving forward with the world's first public open source mycology and biology laboratory. Um, we will have the genetics. Will be open source. We will have classrooms. We are partnering with local colleges. We will start having meetups and a lot more coming in the next month. Uh, so we're releasing a starter to help uh, let everyone support us um, as we go through this. Like I mean, we're talking. I designed the space, and uh, we've got a 25 foot by 25 foot clean room that we are going to camera up so that you guys can see everything. Every angle you can see, like all the auger work, we need to have open air auger work just in the middle of the room. It's going to be amazing. But more, most importantly, I can teach everyone in our local community how to grow their own food and how to help people. And so, yeah, we're going to be rolling out the Kickstarter any day now. So stay tuned. For that. But if you're interested in the meantime, for what we have on sale, etc. Check the comments and things. Uh, we got our class tomorrow, like I said. Do you get a copy? Yes, you do get a copy of the class. Um, I, I'm actually going to review the first class that we did. It was on aseptic technique, and the AV sucked. I figured that out much better now. So I'm actually going to be reviewing it and sending out a much cleaner recording to everyone. So, uh, I just got a really good question on YouTube. Let me repeat it. Uh, what are your thoughts on autoclaves as a 50 liter plus rig with the investment? Okay. So, if you don't know me, uh, follow my Instagram account. Uh, it's at Jesse Noller. Or you can follow uh, the Humble Fungus, which is also fantastic. Uh, and that's at the Humble Fungus on Instagram. And this morning, I actually posted uh, a music video, funnily enough, around um, our 55-gallon drum sterilizer. So we actually run a full bank of nine uh, pressure cookers, 
and one autoclave. And we also run two 55 gallon drum sterilizers. Those drum sterilizers hold pressure. Right. And the reason why is that we want them to hold pressure so we know that everything's sterile. And number two, we don't have cook times that last 36 plus hours. As a mushroom farmer, I will say that if you're going to scale, getting a great big sterilizer is going to be one of the best investments you can make. And we build ours. And we now sell ours on our website. So, All right. Back to cleaning. All right, everything is now clean. Let me go get my morel list. Let's see here, what's up on my shopping list? I need 15 brown morel plates. 15. 15. What kind of sweatshop is this? Now I have enough space to work. I'm a large, hairy man. Brown Morel, come on down. Let's see who's going to win the plate war. Well, we have plate number one. It's got a little bit of condensation. Looks good, nice and thick, moist, good, yummy. Uh, Good contender. Second one, this plate enjoys long walks on the beach and a little bit of privacy when she showers. Um, kind of looking kind of pop and primordia, starting to pin. Also pretty good. A little bit less condensation on that, except you can see there's condensation down there on those peaks. A little worried about that. These have been in the fridge for a while. That one's also fantastic. But this one has the least amount of condensation out of all of them. So I'm going to clone off of this one. Why did I say clone? This, if I cut a bit of, if I cut a bit of mycelium from this and I transfer it to this, that is a clone, right? That's not a new species, that's not a new breed. You need to mix blue dyes, the corn. Uh, so I just got a corn prep question. Here's my easy corn prep. Take your corn, put it in a great big pot, put about three to four inches of water above it in the pot, simmer it for about an hour, pour it out, let it dry a little bit, like 30, 45 minutes. Just air dry, I don't do any fans or anything. Then, when I put, go to put it in the jar or the bag, if I'm worried about the moisture level, I put add two tablespoons of vermiculite in the bottom, and I move on with my life. So, uh, yeah, it's fantastic. I love corn. I was actually just telling somebody earlier that if I was still doing this as a hobby and I didn't have to scale as much, I'd probably still, still be using, like, pint, jar, pint jars of corn, right? Super easy. Super simple. But now that I've learned no soap, no simmer on, like, every grain on the planet, Except for corn, because it's too dense. Um, I'd actually probably never go back to simmering or anything else like that. In fact, I know I won't. All right. Bro. 
Let's see if I can move you guys back. We'll give you give Instagram a better shot. There we go. Shall we transfer? First up, Brown Morel. Brown Morels. So, little fun fact that we'll cover in the lab class tomorrow night. Uh, avail tickets are available to the class uh, tomorrow on the website under classes and learning. It's the cultures class. Uh, we'll be doing something very similar to what you see now. But we talk about morels and others. Um, and I go into morels in detail in the book, or I will be, uh, and about what we learned about breeding and growing morels. Uh, which is, they're not mycorrhizal, they're kind of opportunistic little shits. And uh, we love them, and uh, they really want to grow. It's great. All right. I'm going to talk a little bit less because I've got a retainer, and I don't want to spray stuff all over this when I talk. Let's see how few cuts I can make. Now, while I'm working, I... We'll be taking transfers from the very tip of the hypo growth. And go ahead. Uh, why don't you uh, tell me why I might be doing that? All right. Play to sterile. Now, pro tip. Great pet. Do you have a whole? Uh, let me organize my mouth. Uh, if you've got a blade that's glowing red hot and you want to do a transfer, well, you want to cool it off, so... Done. What I just did is I got this sterile by getting it super duper hot, and then I just quenched that in the plate I'm transferring to. This plate doesn't have live mycelium, so I won't kill anything. Now... Sample didn't want to come off. Boom. Do I shrink wrap the? Uh, yes, we do shrink wrap the plates. So you can probably see those transfers were hyper messy, but there are production plates, so I don't really care. <laughs> Whose idea was to get, make me make 15 morel plates? It was definitely not mine. Yeah. 
Yeah, I leave all of our cultures vacuum sealed. Um, we store them vacuum sealed. We transfer them vacuum sealed. Um, just um, burner. If you mean vacuum sealed in that vacuum bag, no, you can take those out. Um, but shrink wrapped, yes, you should leave them shrink wrapped. If you get cultures from us, leave them shrink wrapped. Unless you're doing something with them, at which point you can take the stream wrap off. As long as you have signed the waiver. But yeah, Burner, take him out of that bag. transfers. Which mushroom types sell the most? Um, right now, lion's mane and oyster mushrooms because they're easily recognizable. Oyster mushrooms come in a variety of colors and varieties, and people will really love seeing those at farmer's markets. But lion's mane, lion's mane is the go-to right now. Everyone loves lion's mane. down everything going in and out of that workspace, even our pins. Does anybody remember what day today is like? Does anybody know what day it is? What's the number? Mm. Jesse hasn't slept a lot. almost forgot to write down the transfer number on this. Why do we keep track of the generations or transfers we do? Because if you don't change your nutrient source and you transfer it too much, they get bored and they die. Or they shut down. So many transfers, 916, Brown Morrell, uh, T2, T2.
No one. No one asked why he. Uh... Oh, no problem on the videos, YouTube. Like I said, we've got a whole YouTube channel. We got classes. We even have a book. Uh, if you want to read Applied Mycology, it's actually available for uh, pre-sale and pre-order on the website. And if you buy it, you get a free digital copy. And uh, when we can get it published, uh, hopefully uh, the hard copy too. But apparently no publisher is touching uh, Russian books right now. Like, uh, bankers aren't touching us. Yeah, that's why we're going to be rolling out the Kickstarter to help uh, build the uh, giant ass Michael that we're going to be living. Brown Morel, T2. done how many transfers do we limit to that's actually a great question um it depends right and really what i mean by that is what we actually watch out for is slowing growth right um this morel culture is very very aggressive well colonized and um if i see this plate kind of slow down that's an indicator to me right that i need to change its nutrient sources so i need to go to my auger recipe and add a gram of soy peptones or a little bit of gypsum uh so hot can be hard on youtube uh, uh ask uh, are we getting the pot treatment so funny thing starting a mushroom business and trying to get insurance basically they uh benchmark you against a garicus by sporus growers which historically have had problems with spore lung and other issues. So there's that. Now in 2021, because of legalization, um, what we're seeing is more and more banks and loans and everything else just dry up because if they, if you say mushroom farm, they automatically assume you mean we are literally selling pounds of Juventus on the floor. So it's a little bit of a, right? It's a combination of Historically, mushroom growers haven't been the best regulated or best overwatched, and now you've just got the Fed acting with a bunch of blocks. So, good times. Or transfers. <laughs> Yeah, so, um, Alexis, uh, yeah, no, it's, uh, that's why we have the PDF version, too. It's, um, the PDF, we're going to do a hard publish of the book, and then we're also going to do, uh, we've also done the e-copy and the PDF version. The reason why is because international shipping and things like that get really crazy, and I really want this knowledge to be accessible to more and more people. Um, Especially as most of the books were written in the 70s and 80s, and I would very much like to read something that was not written in the 70s and 80s. I mean, 80s. Let's see here. What'd you give us, 80s? The 80s gave us toxic capitalism. Yeah! Toxic capitalism. Oh no, I cracked it. There we go. Thanks. Like I said, check out the class it's tomorrow night. We're going to be talking cultures, genetics, morphology, isolation, breeding. Get to ask any question you want to. We're going to be covering a whole bunch of stuff. Do we add peptones? 
So um, we really stick to like a very, very base recipe. We just use light malt extract. Um, but we're monkeying around with like soy peppers and things like that. Mostly just from a, you know, mixing up the nutrient source and training them on new, new, new nutrition, places of uh, carbon, etc. What time? It's five o'clock mountain time burger. Five o'clock burn, uh, five o'clock mountain burger. Which y'all better hope that I eat before class tomorrow because otherwise you're going to get the hangry hole. Now my clothes are torn, so I've got to take these off. Next up, I've got to do a couple of yellow morel transfers. So let me go find those. Wow. Now this specimen, I think, is a little too far gone. I mean, I think the auger dried in that one, guys. Yeah. But believe it or not, I can still resurrect that. Sent that aside again. Okay. All right, yellow morel. These are some transfers I did the other day. You can see they took the plate really, really nicely. Um, the morel starts pretty faint. Um, yeah, I did these on the second. Funny story about the yellow morel. Yellow morel colonizes dark brown, and then it turns... Uh, it colonizes white, then it turns brown, then it turns yellow eventually. It's like, what? White morel colonizes black, then turns yellow. It's like, okay guys, what are you, a bunch of anarchists? This makes no sense. What's next? The gray morel is going to prove, like, it's going to micellate purple and... I hate put gloves on when my hands are damp. Oh, that's not coming on. Sweaty hands, sweaty hands. Much better. The trust buster. I thought that was trust butter, and I was really going to ask you, like, what's trust butter? <laughs> All right. Now let's look at the glorious, disgusting yellow bro. It's not disgusting. Yay, yellow morel. Yellow morel. And no, it's not contaminated. It's fine. Sterilize. So yeah, <clears throat> it's uh, we've just been really busy. It's uh, going through all of these species the last couple of days. It's really kind of like uh, reminded me I have a compulsion of collecting things like Pokemon. Um, we're up to 71 species and I haven't finished. Now, the funny thing about morels is their scleria or sclerosia development makes them basically bomb through. So, this guy has done its secondary colonization already, so it's a bit like cutting up chunks of dried leather. Um, 
Now, the cool thing is because colonization, fruiting bodies, stems, caps, veils, all of it, are basically just little chunks of mycelium, which is what they are. They're just interwoven hyphae. No matter what part you sample, it will always figure out how to re -micelate. Almost lost that one. And we're listening to the dulcet tones of Radio Royalty Free, so I don't get sued and taken down again. Thank you, DMCA. Hot. What's up next? Well, it's our good friend. Uh, no, uh, Alexis. So I just got asked if, uh, since I'm sampling from the corner, Alexis, fun tip. You actually always want to get your sample from the edge of the auger plate. Why? The only place that the enzyme stomach is working is right here at the edge because enzymes and all of the intelligence of the hyphae is located at the hypo tip only. So by grabbing the hypo tip, you're grabbing the most recent enzyme profile for the fungus and therefore the most aggressive growth. So you actually always want to sample the outer edge of that hypo growth. And if you're getting contamination from the lid, open it upside down. I'll show you that in a second. I have a label printer. Um, I just, I'd have to print all of the labels in advance. And uh, for these, these are uh, production plates that we're gonna actually do auger to greens. Uh, and so I just need to just write these down real fast, let them fall nice and throw them on the grain. Now I need white morel, one sec. That one's got a little bit of bacteria, but it'll win. That one's great. That one is on fire. Look at that. This one as well. And then, of course, this is the original transfer plate for what's left of it. So, which one should I sample from? What I'm going to do with this one is I'm actually going to grab, like I explained, only the hypo tips right in here. Let's go. 
spicy. Just pull the blade off, and now we begin. Okay, so if you're worried about contamination from your lid, from the con from condensation, this one doesn't have any, but I'm going to demonstrate. What you do is you flip it over, and you lift that up like this. Like Give me a second, my phone freaking locked up. Let's try to reconnect Instagram because, of course, Instagram randomly broke. What was the moment that made you say, I should turn this into a business? Believe it or not, it actually had nothing to do with this. It was uh, realizing that I had worked in tech my entire life and made the world significantly worse. I wanted to do something that could actually help you. wanted to kind of make the world a better place and not a worse place. So here I am making mushrooms. But like climate change, I'm gonna help feed people, I'm gonna help me grow medicine. Change the world, man. Tell you this much. I took a bit of a pay cut going from tech to a mushroom farm. Okay. That's that list. You want to do the fun thing? Let's resurrect some dead mushrooms. joining us. I'm going to show everything that I'm doing here tomorrow in the class. Tomorrow 5 p.m. Lab Tech Cultures. If I get enough subscribers I'll, or if enough uh, attendees, I'll raise it to two and a half hours from the two, uh, from the hour and a half it is. I'm talking about genetics, cloning, resurrection, like watch me wit, watch me necromance. Maybe. All right. So, here we go. I need auger plates, but first, I need to hydrate these samples. Well, 
what we have here are various samples that um, people have sent us or traded us and things like that. I've got a wild morel sample, another wild morel sample, another wild morel sample, and a pheasant back sample, right? And I've got F, a fish, a fish, a, uh, I can't say it, and then in right? But I'm going to focus on just one of these right now. Um, it's honestly, I'm a little tired of actually right? but here we go. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sterilize them. Someone like the insensitivity for her. Yeah, so uh, welcome to Necromancy 101. Sterilized. Sterilized water, meaning I boiled it. It's now effectively distilled. Hydrogen peroxide, 3%. Why am I doing that? Hydrogen peroxide isn't going to kill the fungus. And it won't kill us, but it will kill all the molds, bacteria, and contaminations. So first, I'm actually going to hydrate this in regular old water. Then I'm going to dunk it into the peroxide to give it a good clean. Now, you see, that's a good chunk of the sample. I don't need that much. So I'm actually going to soak it first. Then I'm going to clean it, and I'm going to cut it in half so I can make two plates and double my chances of success. Well, once again, that sterile water in a wild morel sand is completely dried out. Let me go get a plate. Two auger plates. Two. All right. I'm going to swirl this around for a couple more seconds. I'm just trying to get this moist, right? The reason why is that completely dehydrated mushrooms or mycelium, once they're re exposed to oxygen, water, and all that neat good stuff, will generally re mycelate, right? They're not dead, right? You didn't cook or destroy their cells, you just dried out all the water. And of course, fungi, probably being from space, Kind of said, meh, it's fine. All right, so now, all right, got my sample. It's been hydrated in sterile water for a couple, like a minute. Into the hydrogen peroxide. And then, I'm going to get out a paper towel, right? Why am I doing that? A, I want to cut the sample. B, when I'm doing transfers like this, I don't want a lot of ambient moisture being transferred to the plate, right? Because um, that'll just bump things up and it's increased the chance of contamination, right? Instead, what I'm going to do is after I pull it out of the hydrogen peroxide, I'm going to put it down here, I'm going to cut it in half, and I'm going to transfer it, right? That gets off all the excess stuff. The hydrogen peroxide gets rid of all the mold and other gunk. And remember, hydrogen peroxide won't kill fungus. Okay. Now, let us resurrect. So what's up all on that sleeve on your right arm? Geometric design I did. Um, I actually did the design. I used to be an art student. And um, I uh, did the design, started it. It's a geometric honeycomb design, uh, kind of like a circuit board that goes up over my back shoulder into uh, a skull uh, geometric mon uh, mandala design. Uh, mandala. I can't say it right. Mandala design. Mandala. mandala. Mm -hmm. Sterile. Yeah. 
wild sample. Now let me show you. See how it's all fuzzing up like that? See that? See that fuzz? That's contamination. So now that I cleaned that all off, I'm actually going to rinse it off again. One more rinse. And then I'm going to dunk it in the peroxide one more time. Why did I do that? Mushrooms are porous, right? It's uh, They're basically a bunch of interwoven one cell by one cell by one cell hyphae, right? Well, unfortunately, that means you can get a lot of crap in there when you're, uh, when you're all dried out like this guy was. So what I did was I soaked it, let it get some moisture, then I... Um, touched it with my fingertips just now because it's a very tough sample. But then I dunked it back and forth a couple of times just to make sure I got it as clean as it possibly could. One more dunk in the peroxide because I just touched it. Boom. I just transferred a very contaminated old dried sample of a fungus, namely a morel. The clean auger. I'm a necromancer. Questions about necromancy? I didn't think so. Well, I'm going to let everyone take a pause. I'm going to go use the little boys room, the little micro's room, and I'm going to go get some caffeine before I pass out. Then I'll be back with even more transfers because I've got a bunch to do. Got some exotics, got some medicinals, got everything. And once again, all of this is available on the website before I let you go. And tomorrow, we have our class going over all of this, genetics, biology, etc. And of course, everything is in the applied mycology. So I'm going to be back YouTube. I'm going to be back Instagram. I'm going to be back Jesse. Wait, I'm Jesse. Never mind, I'm tired. All right, I'll be back in a couple minutes with even more transfers. Boom.